Welcome, Web Design 1 students. I'm going to do this kind of review of what we would call Lessons 1 through 3 in our Coding the Web textbook. So kind of looking at just the basic structure, designing the page, and some of the first tags. Now we've been using Thimble, and when you open up Thimble, it automatically pre-populates with tags. I'm going to take those out. Uh, most of the time you should also take those out, but there are times where I tell you you can leave the structure tags in. Thimble also applies a style sheet. We're going to delete that style sheet because we haven't learned how to make those yet. And that style sheet would also be linked to in the head section. So if we left the structure information there, we would need to remove that link as well. So I'm going to start by, uh, just start from scratch. Our first line of every document is going to be the doc type. And that's going to be doc type space HTML. And there's an exclamation mark in there. And that basically just declares that we're using HTML5 as a language. Then we have the HTML tag. That is always the second tag. It's always the last tag, the closing tag of HTML as well. Then we have our two sections of our snowman, the head and the body. So we have our head and we have our body. So kind of think of it this way visually as we're putting these in here so that you don't forget where things go. So we've got our declaration, we've got our HTML, which holds everything, the head, which is going to hold specific things, and then the body, which also holds specific things. So in the head section, basically the only things that are going to go in here are going to be your meta tags, and meta tags um, are basically tags that describe data. Metadata is, is information that describes data. So those meta tags are going to give us additional information for the page. Um, the, the two that we've learned in here so far are the char set or the character set, which is UTF-8. And it's a self-closing tag or an empty tag. There's no separate tag to turn that off. And then the other meta tag is a name tag. And for this one, we set the viewport. And the viewport has to do with the viewable area of the screen, like when you're in Chrome, the white part of the page. So we're going to set the content of the viewport to a width equal to the device width, comma, or space, and then, or no, it is comma, and then initial scale of one. Okay, and that's pretty much just standard. And this should be written in your little HTML man, so you should already have these pretty much just straight up. Also in the head is going to be the title. Recall that the title is the words that you see up in this little bar up here, the title bar. So if I'm creating something um, and I want words up there, I'm just going to put this words in the title bar so that you know that's what would be up there. You won't see it in Thimble that way because it just doesn't preview that because we see Thimble's title. All right, so this is all that goes in the head, the meta tags and the title. And if we were doing a link to a CSS page, it would go in the head, but we're not to that yet. So everything that's in this viewable area has to go in the body. You cannot put headings or paragraphs up here in this section. So none of that goes in the head section. So some of the things that we've learned so far, we've learned H1, which is the largest heading. And if you recall, all headings are bold and headings are block elements. So a heading is going to have a blank space above and below it. Uh, there are six levels of headings, heading one through heading six. Heading six is the smallest. It's actually two sizes smaller than the base font. And so it looks much, much smaller. When using a heading, if you want the heading to break, um, to go down to the next line without having that gap that you would normally have in a block element, we use a line break. That line break is a BR tag which will then break it to the second line. And notice there's no gap here like there are with the others. It just goes immediately down to that next line. So a line break would not be a block element because we use it within the block, within the heading. So all these headings are block elements. This line break is not. Another block element we've learned is an HR tag. HR stands for horizontal rule, which just stands for a line that goes across the screen. So those are some of the basic tags that we learned in the very beginning. So getting us into lesson two, we started to divide the page into sections. And you don't always have to divide the page into sections, but later on when we start adding color, it's going to be better if we have things divided. So generally speaking, we have like a header area of the page. 
In this case, I would probably put my big heading in the header area. And let's say this little heading goes with it. So I'll just put both of those in the header. And then the main part of the page, we usually would call main. Sometimes we'll call it um, something else. And then like all the paragraphs and all the main stuff would be in that main section. And then generally speaking, we have a footer at the bottom. And that footer is just going to have a paragraph that has sometimes copyright information or a byline, you know, created by your name or whatever. So this is pretty common for a footer. Um, so now we have this in specific sections. It's not that you always have to have things in sections. It's just later on when we start adding more things, it's going to be better to divide them into sections. So those semantic tags tell you exactly what they do. You know, a header's at the top, a footer's at the bottom. The main is all the main content of the page. So we got into our heading and our paragraph. We also introduced block quote. A block quote is simply a paragraph, but it's a paragraph that looks different. So here would be a normal paragraph is here. And I'm just going to copy and paste so I have a bunch of words here in this paragraph. Oh, I probably put a space bar here. So I have a bunch of words in this paragraph. Okay. And then I'm going to put the same information like this in a block quote. Again, a block quote is a block element. Gosh, just like a paragraph is. So you don't use both. You use one or the other. So I'm going to put block paragraph is here this time so we can tell it's different than the other one. And I'll paste that one in a bunch of times. And what you should notice here is this block quoted paragraph is indented. So it's indented from both the left and the right. It's scooted in on both ends. Okay, so that's, that's a block quote. And then, you know, I could go back and just have a normal paragraph after that. Like so. And you can see the difference quite visibly there between the two. We also have talked about using strong and em. Strong is what we use to represent bold, so you would never use strong on a heading because headings are already bold. But you could use strong on a paragraph. You could use strong on just a word anywhere. It's just strong, and then you turn it off with slash strong. Now remember, you don't turn it off until after the word because this says turn on the bold, and this says turn off the bold. So you can see that one is bold. Or you could even do a whole sentence. We'll do an EM this time. EM is our preferred way to italicize. And since I'm italicizing to the end of the paragraph, it goes before the paragraph for proper nesting. Okay, so now we've got that in there. So we've got a pair, a line that is in italics and a line that is strong or bold. So those are pretty much all of the things here from this lesson. Um, I did introduce you to the alternate ones I and B for italics and bold, but I told you that those are not best to use. Um, and then there's one called pre, and again, I never use pre. Pre is just pre-formatted text. It looks like a typewriter typed it, and you can enter, and it just puts it exactly on there the way you have it. It's not very useful, to be honest. So, But that's pre-formatted text. That's what that's called. Okay, so that takes care of that lesson. That gets us into lesson three, our most recent lesson, which is on lists. And we talked about three types of lists. We have ordered lists. Ordered lists are going to be in a specific order. Ordered lists start with an OL, which stands for ordered list. And then each item in the list is going to have an LI to represent it. So I'm going to put cat, bat, and mat. And there we go. I've got my ordered list. The exact same format is followed for an unordered list. A bulleted list would be an unordered list. They're in no particular order. So an unordered list here, I would, I'm going to put red, blue, yellow. And again, make sure your list is turned off. If you should fail to turn your list off, you're going to notice, and I'll take this one out here after yellow, that it's going to affect that HR that's after it. It would also even affect a, a paragraph. So I'll just put in a little paragraph down here. So if I take this UL out and refresh over here, what you'll notice is 
this HR now lines up, and so does the paragraph. It all lines up with the text of the list. So that is a telltale sign. There's also pink happening, so it knows there's something wrong. Um, so I'm going to come up here and put that back in there. Whoops. There we go. So now it's normal. We've got our paragraph back where it should be. We've got our HR back where it should be. The third type of list is a description list. It's different. There's no LIs. It has two parts, DT, which stands for description term, and DD, which stands for description definition. This would be for like vocabulary type things, probably more than anything else, but it's DT and then DD, which describes. And again, it's all contained within a DL um, and everything goes in between. And basically the second line gets indented. Um, but this is different than if we were to have a paragraph and we did the same thing. If I said, oops, I put an O in there. If I said um, paragraph cat and then block quote, which is what would scoot that over meow, it looks similar, but it's different because there's space between these because these are two block elements. So they're going to have a blank line between them. In a description list, you can see there is no line between them because they're all part of that same block element, that DL block element. So that's the difference between those. Um, we also talked about nesting lists. So let's say underneath red, no, let's say underneath cat, that I wanted to list some different cat names, for instance. So after that list item, the cat list item, you would put in the new list and keep it all together. So if I've got that on here, I might then add some cat names, let's say, Scamper and Roxy, whatever. Notice that these bullets look different. The default bullet style is a disc, D-I-S-C, like a Frisbee disc. When you nest a list, that second level of a list becomes what we call circle bullets, unfilled circle bullets. So circle is an unfilled, whereas disc is a filled. Notice it automatically indents it as well. You got to make sure that you turn that list off or things could go crazy. So if I cut this out of here and refresh, see now my bat and my math that they're in the wrong place. Okay, so make sure that you do that properly. Okay, so we've got those in there. Um, and that's pretty much what we've covered. The last part of lesson three, we got into um, entity codes. Oh, we also changed the uh, the value of these. So where it says one in our OLs, and this doesn't work in the ULs, but we can set the type of list to say a letter and it changes them to letters. You could do Roman numerals, that's a capital I, it would be those. Um, so you can do that. You can also change the start value. So if I set the start to start at 20, it's gonna start with the 20th letter of the alphabet, which is T. So type and start are two attributes that we can use inside that OL tag. Okay, finally, the entity codes. There's a link to two different places where you can find entity codes. I'll take you to one of those now. You can see here entity codes begin with an ampersand. So there's no tags, there's no pointed brackets like you're used to. It's an ampersand at the front and a semicolon at the back. Okay, and then if it has a word, for instance, copyright, copyright is one that's pretty common, and that's ampersand copy semicolon. It turns purple and thimble, and you can see the copyright symbol. I probably should space bar there so it looks okay. So if they have names, you just put the name between the ampersand and the semicolon. If they don't have names, they'll either have what they call decimal values, hexadecimal values, uh, or decimal values or hexadecimal reference. So there's two different ones. And if it's the decimal one, and they usually, you can kind of tell, they start with nines, most of them, they're going to have a hashtag in front of them after the ampersand. And if they're the hex ones, because it's hex, they start with a, a pound sign or a hashtag and then an X and then the number. So it gets kind of confusing when you start trying to add some of these in here. So if I wanted to use this airplane, and I'm not using the hex one, it's 9992. But it's a decimal, so I've got to put in that hashtag, 9992. So I can say ampersand hashtag 9992 
semicolon. And there's my plane. So there you go. There's your quick recap for the first three lessons.